Welcome to Home Library Book Review, where we select a book right from the shelf and explain its learning through easy to understand text, graphics, examples, and animation, along with discussion with family members. Today, we're going to be reviewing Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It's a classic bestseller released in 1937. It has sold more than 30 million copies worldwide. The book is not only addressing money, but also relationships of all the experience that we have and hold our beliefs about. To be able to capture maximum learnings from this book, we have divided this review into two parts. This is part one of two. And this book also has Goodreads rating of four out of five. Napoleon Hill was an American author in the area of the New Thought Movement who was one of the earliest producers of the modern genre of personal success literature. He is widely considered to be one of the greatest writers on success. His most famous work, Think and Grow Rich, is one of the best-selling books of all time. Hill's work examined the power of personal beliefs and the role they play in personal success. He became an advisor to President Franklin D. Roosevelt from 1933 to 1936. What the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve is one of Hill's hallmark expressions how achievement actually occurs and a formula for it that puts success in reach of the average person were the focal point of Hill's books. Before we move further, Arnav, can you please tell me what does it mean to grow rich? Dad, I think grow rich means grow in value. Yes, it can also mean to do well. It can also mean to flourish or be wealthy or let's say having progress. Did you know Arnav, there is a saying which is the starting point of all achievement is desire. And this was said by Napoleon Hill himself. Now I can't wait to review this book. How about you Arnav? Yeah dad, let's start right away. Number one, desire. Every human being who reaches the age of understanding of the purpose of money wishes for it. Wishing will not bring riches, but desiring riches with a state of mind that becomes an obsession, then planning definite ways and means to acquire riches and backing those plans with persistence which does not recognize failure will bring riches. The method by which desire for riches can be transmuted into its financial equivalent consists of six definite practical steps. First, fix in your mind the exact amount of money you desire. Second, determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. Third, establish a definite date 
when you intend to possess the money you desire. Fourth, create a definitive plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once. Fifth, write out a clear, concise statement of the amount of money you intend to acquire. And sixth, read your written statement aloud at least twice daily. Columbus, Edison, Wright Brothers, and Marconi, they all had burning desires with which they turned their dreams into reality. And so can you if you have a strong desire which recognizes no such word as impossible and accepts no such reality as failure. Number 2. Faith Faith is the head chemist of the mind. When faith is blended with the vibration of thought, the subconscious mind instantly picks up the vibration, translates it into its spiritual equivalent and transmits it to infinite intelligence. Faith is the external elixir which gives life, power and action to the impulse of thought. Faith is the starting point of all accumulation of riches. Faith is the basis of all miracles and all mysteries which cannot be analyzed by the rules of science. Faith is the only known antidote for failure. Faith is the element, the chemical which when mixed with prayers gives one direct communication with infinite intelligence. Faith is the only agency through which the cosmic force of infinite intelligence can be harnessed and used by man. It is a well-known fact that one person comes finally to believe whatever one person repeats to oneself whether the statement is true or false. If a man repeats a lie over and over, he will eventually accept the lie as truth. Moreover, he will believe it to be the truth, but every man is what he is because of the dominating thoughts which he permits to occupy his mind. Hence, faith removes limitations and if we want to achieve anything we should always keep the faith number three auto suggestion auto suggestion is a term which applies to all suggestions and all self-administered stimuli which reach one's mind through the five senses. Stated in another way, auto-suggestion is self-suggestion. It is the agency of communication between that part of the mind where conscious thoughts take place and that which serves as the seat of action for the subconscious mind. Through the dominating thoughts which one permits to remain in the conscious mind, whether these thoughts be negative or positive is immaterial. The principle of auto-suggestion voluntarily reaches the subconscious mind and influences it with these thoughts. Remember, no thought, whether it be negative or positive, can enter the subconscious mind without the aid of the principle of auto-suggestion. Therefore, auto-suggestion is the agency of control through which an individual may voluntarily feed his subconscious mind on thoughts of a creative nature or by neglect 
permit thoughts of a destructive nature to find their way into his rich garden of the mind. Therefore, keep repeating positive things to yourself day in and day out and you will find auto-suggestion doing the same for your subconscious mind. Number 4. Specialized Knowledge There are two kinds of knowledge. One is general, the other is specialized. General knowledge, no matter how great in quantity or variety it may be, is of but little use in the accumulation of money. The faculties of the great universities possess in the aggregate practically every form of general knowledge known to civilization. Most of the professors have but little or no money. They specialize on teaching knowledge, but they do not specialize on the organization or the use of knowledge. Knowledge will not attract money unless it is organized and intelligently directed through practical plans of actions to the definite end of accumulation of money. Now, lack of understanding of this fact has been the source of confusion to millions of people who falsely believe that knowledge is power. It becomes power only when and if it is organized into definite plans of actions and directed to a definite end. Therefore, we should learn how to organize and use general knowledge after we acquire it into specialized knowledge in the field we need to succeed. Number 5. Imagination The imagination is literally the workshop wherein our fashioned all plans created by man. The impulse, the desire is given shape, form and action through the aid of the imaginative faculty of the mind. It has been said that man can create anything which he can imagine. Of all the ages of civilization, this is the most favorable for the development of the imagination because it is an age of rapid change. On every hand, one may connect stimuli which develop the imagination. Through the aid of the imaginative faculty, man has discovered and harnessed more of nature's forces during the past 50 years than during the entire history of the human race previous to that time. He has conquered the air so completely that the birds are a poor match for him in flying. He has harnessed the ether and made it serve as a means of instantaneous communication with any part of the world. He has analyzed and weighed the sun at a distance of millions of miles and has determined through the aid of imagination the elements of which it consists. You know, man's only limitation within reasons lies in his development and use of his own imagination. Number 6. Organized Planning Organized planning is nothing but crystallization of desire into action. Every plan you adopt in your endeavor to accumulate wealth should be the joint creation of yourself and every other member of your mastermind group. You may originate your own plans 
either in whole or in part, but see that those plans are checked and approved by the members of your mastermind alliance. If the first plan which you adopt does not work successfully, replace it with a new plan. If this new plan fails to work, replace it in turn with still another and so on until you find a plan which does work. Right here is a point at which the majority of men meet with failure. Because of their lack of persistence in creating new plans to take the place of those which fail. The most intelligent man living cannot succeed in accumulating money nor in any other undertaking without plans which are practical and workable. Just keep this fact in mind and remember when your plan fails that temporary defeat is not permanent failure. It may only mean that your plans have not been sound, build other plans, start all over again. Let's summarize what we have reviewed so far. Number one, desire. Number two, faith. Number three, auto suggestion. Number four, specialized knowledge. Number five, imagination. And finally, number six, organized planning. Million copies worldwide. The book is not only addressing money, but also relationships of all the experience that we have and hold our beliefs about. To be able to cover maximum learnings from this book, we have made this book into two parts. This is part two of two. It also has Goodreads rating of four out of five. Napoleon Hill was an American author in the area of the New Thought Movement who was one of the earliest producers of the modern genre of personal success literature. He is widely considered to be one of the greatest writers on success. His most famous work, Think and Grow Rich, is one of the best-selling books of all time. Hill's work examined the power of personal beliefs and the role they play in personal success. He became an advisor to President Franklin D. Roosevelt from 1933 to 1936. What the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve is one of Hill's hallmark expressions how achievement actually occurs and a formula for it that puts success in reach of the average person were the focal points of Hill's books. Before we move further, Arnav can you please tell me, what does it mean to grow rich? Dad, I think grow rich means grow in value. Yes, it can also mean to do well. It can also mean to flourish or be wealthy or let's say having progress. Did you know Arnav, there is a saying which is the starting point of all achievement is desire. And this was said by Napoleon Hill himself. Now I can't wait to review this book. How about you Arnav? Yeah dad, let's start right away. Number one decision 
accurate analysis of over 25,000 men and women who had experienced failure disclosed the fact that lack of decision was near the head of the list of the 30 major causes of failure. This is no mere statement of a theory. It is a fact. Procrastination, the opposite of decision, is a common enemy which practically every man must conquest. Analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing these decisions slowly if and when they were changed. People who failed to accumulate money without exception have the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly and of changing these decisions quickly and often. The majority of people who fail to accumulate money sufficient for their needs are generally easily influenced by the opinions of others. They permit the newspapers and the gossiping neighbors to do their thinking for them. Opinions are the cheapest commodities on earth. Everyone has a flock of opinions ready to be wished upon anyone who will accept them. And if you are influenced by opinions when you reach decisions, you will not succeed in any undertaking much less in that of transmuting your own desire into money. Number two, persistence. Persistence is an essential factor in the procedure of transmuting desire into its monetary equivalent. The basis of persistence is the power of will. Will power and desire, when properly combined, make an irresistible pair. Men who accumulate great fortunes are generally known as cold-blooded and sometimes ruthless. Often they are misunderstood. What they have is willpower, which they mix with persistence and place back of their desires to ensure the attainment of their objectives. The majority of people are ready to throw their aims and purposes overboard and give up at the first sign of opposition or misfortune. A few carry on despite all opposition until they attain their goal. There may be no heroic connotation to the word persistence, but the quality is to the character of man what carbon is to steel. Number 3. Power of the Mastermind Power is essential for success in the accumulation of money. Plans are inert and useless without sufficient power to translate them into action. Power may be defined as organized and intelligently directed knowledge. Power as the term is here used refers to organized effort sufficient to enable an individual to transmute desire into its monetary equivalent. Organized effort is produced through the coordination of effort of two or more people who work towards a definite end in a spirit of harmony. 
power is required for the accumulation of money power is necessary for the retention of money after it has been accumulated you see knowledge may be acquired from any of the foregoing sources but it may be converted into power by organizing it into definitive plans and by expressing those plans in terms of action if the plans are comprehensive and if they contemplate large proportions then a man must generally induce others to cooperate with him before he can inject into them the necessary element of power thus the mastermind may be defined as coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose keep in mind the fact that there are only two known elements in the whole universe energy and matter it is a well known fact that matter may be broken down into units of molecules atoms and electrons there are units of matter which may be isolated separated and analyzed likewise there are units of energy the human mind is a form of energy a part of it being spiritual in nature when the minds of two people are coordinated in a spirit of harmony the spiritual units of energy of each mind form an affinity which constitutes the psychic phase of the master mind Number 4 the subconscious mind The subconscious mind consists of a field of consciousness in which every impulse of thought that reaches the objective mind through any of the five senses is classified and recorded and from which thoughts may be recalled or withdrawn as letters may be taken from a filing cabinet it receives and files sense impressions or thoughts regardless of their nature you may voluntarily plant in your subconscious mind any plan thought or purpose which you desire to translate into its physical or monetary equivalent the subconscious acts first on the dominating desires which have been mixed with emotional feeling such as faith the subconscious mind works day and night through a method of procedure unknown to man the subconscious mind draws upon the forces of infinite intelligence for the power with which it voluntarily transmutes one's desire into their physical equivalent making use always of the most practical media by which this end may be accomplished now you cannot entirely control your subconscious mind but you can voluntarily hand over to it any plan desire or purpose which you wish transformed into concrete form there is plenty of evidence to support the belief that the subconscious mind is the connecting link between the finite mind of man and infinite intelligence it is intermediary through which one may draw upon the forces of infinite intelligence at will it alone consists the secret process by which mental impulses are modified and changed into their spiritual equivalent the possibilities of creative effort connected with the subconscious mind are stupendous and imponderable 
Also, the subconscious mind will not remain idle. If you fail to plant desires in your subconscious mind, it will feed upon the thoughts which reach it as a result of your neglect. Number 5. The Brain It has been observed that every human brain is both a broadcasting and receiving station for the vibration of thought. Through the medium of the ether, in a fashion similar to that employed by the radio broadcasting principle, every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thoughts which are being released by other brains. The creative imagination is the receiving set of the brain which receives thoughts released by the brains of others. It is the agency of communication between one's conscious or reasoning mind and the sources from which one may receive thought stimuli. When stimulated or stepped up to a high rate of vibration, the mind becomes more receptive to the vibration of thought, which reaches it through the ether from outside sources. The stepping up process takes place through the positive emotions or the negative emotions. Through the emotions, the vibrations of thought may be increased. Vibrations of an exceedingly high rate are the only vibrations picked up and carried by the ether from one brain to another. Thought is energy traveling at an exceedingly high rate of vibration. Thought which has been modified or stepped up by any of the major emotion vibrates at a much higher rate than ordinary thought and it is type of thought which passes from one brain to another through the broadcasting machinery of the human brain. Number 6. The Sixth Sense The sixth sense is that portion of the subconscious mind which has been referred to as the creative imagination. It has also been referred to as the receiving set through which ideas, plans and thoughts flash into the mind. The flashes are sometimes called hunches or inspirations. The sixth sense defies description. It cannot be described to a person who has not mastered the other principles of this philosophy because such a person has no knowledge and no experience with which the sixth sense may be compared. Understanding of the sixth sense comes only by meditation through mind development from within. The sixth sense probably is the medium of contact between the finite mind of man and infinite intelligence and for this reason it is a mixture of both the mental and the spiritual. Let's summarize what we have reviewed so far. Number one, decision. Number two, persistence. Number three, power of the master mind. Number four, the subconscious mind. Number five, the brain. And finally, number six, the sixth sense.
Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe. Also press on the bell notification button for more videos like these. Until next time, take care and bye.